Hello everyone and welcome back to Audio Analysis Theater, where we're going to be looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly in the audio drama world. I apologize for the delay on this one, I just need to do a little few tweaks in the assessment of this one, but I promise this one's back in action, looking good, and I promise you this, this one may make your heart flutter a bit. Today, we're going to be looking at an audio drama that took two years in the making, an audio drama that has gathered together many different talents from all over the community and beyond. And an audio drama I think you'll have to agree with me makes you feel right at home. That audio drama being Miss Obab Scribbler's No Place Like Home. Will this audio drama make you feel right at home or will you want to turn tail and run? Let's find out today on Audio Analysis Theater. It's so dark. So before we actually get into the sections, let me first read the description that is on the video about what this actual series is about. Set during early season 4, No Place Like Home is the story of love across worlds as Lyra finds herself lost in time and space. Thrown into a world where the magic of friendship is enough to drive back the darkness and ponies are so splintered by their differences that they are prey for other creatures who stalk the land. Can she make it home? After learning some horrific truths about Equestria, would she even want to? Now, as it says, a part of the series title, this is an MLP audio drama. Now, an audio drama itself has a few specific classifications to it in how style and technique should be used. This series has very little actual narrator narration happening, and the narration actually comes through the character interactions. These individuals help move the plot along and allow the story to actually progress without needing a big voice to tell what's going on or what characters do. Audio dramas differ from audio plays in that they use as little pictures as possible. They differ from radio dramas which use the occasional opening and closing narration, and they're different from audiobook or fanfic reading as they generally generally will include a multitude of voices that allows to get the characters across, and not just one person speaking the entire time. So with this gargantuan project taking two years to make, let's give it its proper time and effort and start off with the very first section, audio. In audio, we're looking for clear mics descriptive tones, emoting, and well-paced and well-flowing lines, so it sounds natural to hear. Does Obab Scribbler do this? I have to say, yes! Yes, she and her team does with a 10 out of 10! I'm not sure what other people have said about this, but the audio, in my opinion, is the star of this whole project, and that's what you want. Every line is descriptive and clear and smooth. The emoting is brilliantly done. It is unbelievable to see this in an audio drama, as so often they're left to the wayside or audio is not descriptive enough. It is brilliant to see, and I have to applaud Obab and her team. You all have done a fantastic job on this, and I say hats off to you. Keep up the fantastic work and keep up doing brilliant jobs. Moving on now, let's hit story. In story, we want descriptive works. We want nice, interesting stories with originality. And if they're reworks, we want them to make sense and give them a fun twist. Again, does this section hold truth? I can happily say it does. This section gets another 10 out of 10. The interesting thing about No Place Like Home is the quality of description. Oftentimes in this series, we've seen that description can be a bit of an issue. How things are either not written detailed enough or not written detailed at all, which can cause the viewer to have a very hard time figuring out what's going on. This is not the case when it comes to No Place Like Home. In No Place Like Home, I can shut my eyes and almost 99% of the time know what's going on. Mostly the hiccup comes in episode 2, primarily with just some of the scenes, but that honestly is not as bad considering the first episode did it 100% well. And even in episode 2, it's not so bad. There's just very few scenes which I can understand being a bit hard to describe 
and make it flow naturally, and that the description is pushed aside a bit so that it flows more naturally. I will say that in this case, I'm happy that the description is not written as well in the very few scenes it happens, and instead is replaced with better flowing dialogue. Every character is given different walks of life, different ideas, different viewpoints, different feelings, and they feel individual. Even when they go into the alternate worlds and all the crazy, war-like, splintered sections, it still sounds believable. These characters seem and feel like they would really exist in another world, and I have to applaud Obab for doing that. Finally, I will say on a basic level that this is simply just brilliant to see for how easy it is to hear on an oral level and the fact that it's consistent throughout the episodes. I'm not sure how episode 3, 4, or however many there are gonna be in here will be, but if the first two episodes are any indication, audiences should definitely look at this, not only for how to improve audio quality, but how to make a descriptive and brilliant tale. Up next, we've got characters. Now, characters are a tricky business to make, especially when you're in an alternate world. But in this category, we're looking specifically for characters being natural, interesting, and compelling. We're looking if characters are going to be in reworks, such as what happened with Pinky Tails, for them to still feel natural in their other scenes and roles. And for new works, we're looking for the characters, if they're canon characters, to stay true to themselves and new characters to feel like they actually fit in this world. Does Obab Scribbler do it for this round? Is the sky blue? Because yes. Yes, she did. This girl got a triple strike in bowling because this category gets another perfect 10 out of 10. I have to admit, characters are very hard to write, especially when they're not your characters to start with. It's hard to make them fit and feel natural in the world, and it's also hard to make them feel like they would belong. But Obab Scribbler does so in a very interesting way. She shows us the characters, a good chunk of them at least, in both settings and allows us to examine and understand them in a very compelling way. We feel sympathetic for Lyra and Apple Bloom. We feel at first glance of Applejack a very annoyance in how she's acting. We love Big Mac. We're interested to see where Bonbon bon is. It is brilliant. I gotta say, these characters are ones that I would not only believe they exist in this world, I could honestly believe they would exist if the show took on this kind of story. So I have to say, hats off again to you, Obab Scribbler and your team for providing some brilliant characters. Now let's move on to the next section, themes and techniques. For themes and techniques, we're not only looking for the series to look pretty or seem nice, we're also looking for it to flow properly. That means good sections where we don't have audio being cut short or repeating, audio being clear, and music not overpowering it. Does No Place Like Home fill that in? Almost. It hits the mark pretty close with a 9.5 out of 10. Everything in here is really good. The fact that there's no music overtaking the speakers. It's smooth, it's clear, the pictures aren't blurry or pixelated. We know how far away an individual is most of the time. The themes of the story match what is advertised. But there's one issue that comes up that really would be beneficial for the team to consider using. And that technique is to say what side of the room individuals are talking in. The best situation I could say represents this is in the episode one at Noteworthy's shop, when Lyra and Noteworthy are talking. Although it's a very good scene and described very well and emoted very well, the issue is is that the picture is showing on one side of the room, there's Lyra, and on the other side of the room, there's Noteworthy. It's not a big thing for an audio drama to include it, but when the visuals depict that someone is on one side of the room and another person on the other side of the room, and it doesn't sound so in audio, that can be a bit confusing. Again, it's a nitpick, and it's not really a mandatory nitpick, it just has something that could allow fans to be more immersed in the world. 
So while I would suggest consider looking into those techniques, I also still applaud Obab and her team for editing and creating an audio quality and video quality in this work that is impressive on all accounts. Good job. You should all be very proud of yourselves. Now next up we hit visuals. Visuals we are looking for some of them as minimal as possible. And for an audio drama, that is true as true can be. Audio dramas, as I've said before, require very little pictures. Audio dramas can get away with one to three images per scene, if at that. So how do the pictures hold up in no place like home? Well, this one takes a bit of a nosedive, but not that bad at all. Visuals got an 8 out of 10, primarily in four big categories. The amount of pictures per scene, the style per scene, visuals not taking away from the viewer's experience, and images staying still on screen and are not animated. Episode 2 had a great extra amount of images. They weren't bad images, they actually were pretty nice, but the issue is with the multiple image effect, it causes the viewer to have to keep looking at the screen. And you could say that's a good thing, but when I'm trying to listen to what the characters say, and then I'm trying to stare at the screen to see what the new picture is, that's where the issues come into effect. This also causes issues when the styles change. Again, a lot of these pictures have great quality images. But with the styles changing as much as they do in episode 2, it causes us to divert our attention from listening to watching. And you really don't want to do that in an audio drama. Lastly is the images moving on screen. Though they're not animated, there are many scenes in the second episode where images change to match what's going on specifically with Applejack and Apple Bloom's fight, and of course what happens when Applejack is trying to get Big Mac out of his room. These are two scenes that really represent how exactly it can take away from a person's enjoyment of an episode. Again, if individuals prefer to have a lot more images in there, I'm not going to stop them, but I would then say that if this is going to happen, to be careful. And while I am not a mind reader, the same advice goes to Miss Obab Scribbler as well. Though I'm pretty sure I don't need to tell her to be careful with how well she's done in the previous three categories. But speaking of categories, we go to our last category, our final one, and that is music and songs. We're looking for the music to be appealing and interesting. The singers must fit in with the song they're doing, and the lyrics also need to fit with what's going on. Rather than depict the scene, give either a character's inner thoughts, or move the story along in a way that doesn't feel rushed. And how does No Place Like Home actually do? Impressively well, with a 10 out of 10. Though the song is only at the ending and the beginning of the episode, it is still a treat. It fills in the nice vocals with a big, extravagant voice, giving us the idea of this extravagant tale coming. The lyrics fit in well as well, not giving too much about what's going to happen, but not giving too little. The chords and the instrumentals also fit the big, dramatic tale that's about to unfold with us, and is unbelievably appealing to hear. This has got to be some of the best music work I've seen in a long time. This is not only a song I've enjoyed listening to in the audio drama, it's one that I would love to listen to again and again and again. It's gripping, it's emotional, it's interesting, and it's wonderful. I've been told that Mr. Reverb Brony and Miss Brillitzi, I apologize if I messed up your name there, are both the musicians and the singers of this work. And I have to say, I tip my hat off to both of you. This is an impressive work and you both should be immensely proud of yourselves for doing an incredibly amazing job. I have no idea if you guys want to do more covers and work together, but I highly, highly, highly suggest it. And as well, for anyone who is making an audio drama and would like to include music, I would suggest going to Reverb Brony and Berlitzi for advice. So, after all of that work, 
What do I say that No Place Like Home gets? A 57.5 out of 60, or a 95%. Well done, Obab Scribbler and your team. There's not really much else for me to say, other than this is an audio drama that took the time and effort it needed and did it right. Anybody, and I mean anybody, who wants to get into audio dramas, wants to work on their own audio dramas, want to improve their own audio dramas, go to this team. There are impressive writing talents, musical talents, voice acting talents, and tech talents on this team. While again there were a bit of issues with how many visuals were on screen, and a few tech issues, that wasn't necessarily bad considering how well episode 1 did. I am not sure where the future for No Place Like Home is. Whether it will be millions of views or not. But I gotta say, if the first two episodes are any indication, No Place Like Home could be running for the top spot as one of the best audio dramas this community has ever seen. So well done. Well done indeed. You should all be immensely proud of yourselves. Now with that out of the way, next time on Audio Analysis Theatre, we'll be looking at Miss Lost Narrator's Truth Be Told. Will this creepy fic get a gold star, or will it fall flat on its back? Let's find out next time on Audio Analysis Theatre. And if you really want to be generous, please like this video, comment to tell me what you want to see, or maybe if you have an audio drama you want me to look over, and share this video to get the word out. Till next time, this has been Silver Starling, hoping that your travels are light and your road is safe until we meet again. One lost soul.